Did you know that dogs have an incredible memory for people and experiences? Studies suggest that dogs can remember individuals that they haven't seen for years and that they can recall specific events and places from their past. Chrissy, I have to tell you, every single time I see my dad, no matter if it's been a year since we've seen each other, he's always asking me, do you think the dogs remember me? And I'm like, of course they do. Cause they completely freak out when they see him. And they even freak out when they see like my extended cousins they haven't seen in like five years. And so I know this is true. Do your dogs do that too? I definitely believe that. And I think what's really cool is that like, you know, just, just kind of how we see it is that those nostalgic moments, it's so obvious yeah. that they remember <laughs> them because like the dog's reaction is not just like a, Hey, what's up? Who are you? It's like, a, Oh my gosh, I haven't seen you in forever. Come back. Right. I know. I don't need any studies to know that this is true for sure. Well, I'm excited for today's episode and welcome everyone to the dog moms. Dog moms, dog moms, what you Hi, everyone, and thank you for tuning in today. Hopefully, you are listening to us on some of your adventures and travels with your dog. Well, we do have a very great episode for you. If you're a fan of getting out there and doing things with your dog, this is going to be the episode for you because today we're going to actually interview Susie Teitelman. She is a pet exercise expert, but not just that. She is the founder of Doga. That's right. I said Doga, not yoga, but there is a lot that connects there. That's right. Susie's actually been teaching Doga for 20 years and she started Doga with her dog back in 2001 in New York City. And I've actually taken a yoga class with my dog before. I didn't know it was like a thing. So I'm really excited to talk to Susie and find out more about it. I know, but I learned like, you know, just from doing some research is that it's not just about like doing exercise with your, with your dog, but she's she does a lot as far as like your spiritual bond, your mm. place how you have your everyday life with your dog. And so she has a really cool book as well called The Paw of Attraction. Oh, that's is, so cute. I know, is that great? <laughs> I know. So it'll be lots of fun to kind of deep dive into this with her. I can't wait to bring her on. Awesome. Well, guys, don't forget, if you'd like to send us a question, we like to answer questions at the end of the show. You can go to dogtv.com slash the dog moms. Leave us a little voice message and we'd love to hear from you and answer some of your questions. But before we get to our interview, I have of a kind of ridiculous story. Okay, you've been I... holding us back because you warned me about this and I'm like, all right, well, you're just going to have to tell me on the show. I know. This happened last night, everyone. And um, it it was it was a great ending. Everything is fine. But, um, but you have for those worried. Listen- <laughs> what is going on? She's for smiling, those, guys. She's those, laughing and I'm smiling. Like, so. I'm laughing because it's funny uh. now. I mean, and thankfully, it was with my dog who is just like the most easygoing, go with the flow kind of guy. And so I need to must be Oakley. Yeah, it's Oakley. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) he was just like, this is my life now. So last night, Chrissy, um, I met up with a photographer friend and she's entering these competitions to see if she can uh, win, you know, different competitions with her photography. And the challenge was reflection. And I messaged her and said, hey, I have inflatable paddle boards and my dogs are used to being on the paddle boards. So if you want to try reflection photos out on the lake, I'm happy to help you. Yeah, it was a great idea. So um, we started off with the paddleboard. You know, I blew up one paddleboard. I brought two uh, and put Oakley, my really chill dog, on the paddleboard. Did you go on there with him? Were you with him on that? Well, I have to get him out in the water on the paddleboard. And then I had to like climb through the water and get out. So I did get kind of kind of wet. Um. And the the water kept pushing the paddleboard with him on it, like towards us on the shore. Is this like a lake or an ocean or what? Are we yeah, so here? it's a it's a lake, and people go out on boats. And oh, well, that's it, good. It's not. It like, was you really know, really pretty. Water. No, <laughs> the water was pretty still, but there was like a slight breeze, so it was kind of blowing the paddleboard towards us, and it kept on blowing it to the shore. So I was like, okay, you know what? Maybe let's put it further out. Yeah, so that yeah, you have a chance. Yeah, so you have a chance to get a photo because it's gonna bl- like. The wind's going to eventually like bring the paddleboard to us on shore. So we took the paddleboard in Oakley all the way out a little bit further. I pushed him out. The photographer got back and ready. And as soon as we push him out on the water and I had a rope attached, but I had to push it a little bit further than the rope. The wind stopped and Oakley was just on the paddleboard (laughs) by himself. (laughs) 
Oh my god! In the middle of the lake. Wait, I think it's important for readers to know that this probably, if I have it correctly, you warned me. You're like last night something happened. This wasn't in the heat of the day. No, no, this, this was, was like at like seven thirty at night. Yeah. He was very content. Oh um, I have pictures and videos. So you can tell he was not stressed at all. But I was stressing. I was like, um, it wasn't pushing my dog to me anymore. So thank goodness I brought a second paddleboard. But he was out there for a, a little bit of time. Oh he ended up gosh. just taking a nap. He was oh taking God. a nap <laughs> and I was like feeling like the worst dog mom ever, but he, he just, was just very- like, this is, this is my life now. I'm just, yeah. gonna, this is, this is okay. <laughs> I think this goes really well into what we just talked about. We're about to have, you know, Susie on the show, but like your energy affects your dog. I think if yep. you probably started panicking, oh, he would have been, if I would have been like, Kyle! Then he probably would have also freaked out, but I was like, we know he's not the most glamorous swimmer, so it's probably a good thing that he did. I I was like, all right, just stay on the board. I'll go blow up my other paddle board, which takes, you know, a little bit of time. And I was able to go and fetch him, but he just laid down and took a nap and accepted his fate. So (laughs) um, he, he, I think he enjoyed himself. When I got back to him, I was expecting him to be all stressed out. And he was like, Oh, hey, mom. And hey. I was like, hey. the life, I'm glad. what we do, what we do for fashion and photography, right? You know? Oh my gosh. Oh, it was, no. a, it was a Oakley, story to remember. He has quite a few water stories. And if you've watched the dog mom show, you'll catch one of the episodes where we kind of deep dive into one of those other escapades he's been in yeah. the water, but he has kind of a trend happening <sighs> here. Oh my goodness. I know. Oh. Me and my well, dog. I can't wait Maybe. to see those photos. We're going to have to link them to this. We're going to have to link them to this show so people can yes. see. And I do have a video. I'll put that up on social media somewhere. Some, some things so you guys could see the video of Oakley straight up napping in the middle of a lake <sighs> on a paddleboard. Well, you was, know what? If it was going to happen to any dog, it was the right dog. <laughs> Absolutely. He's, he's so chill. He's so relaxed. <laughs> well, I think that this kind of goes perfectly with our episode actually, because we're going to be talking about being in like the state of mind that our dogs are in. And yes. if I could, if I could be as chill and as anxiety free as Oakley, I would I mean, love that. I don't, know if you guys can, I don't know if you guys can see it, but like, can you see? No, we can't, can't see him. You can't hold on. I'll I think your you. mic is blocking him. I see a butt. Do you see a butt? For those of you guys that are listening, uh, her dog Beasley is just straight up chilling behind her. If you watch her, the, so. dog, the, dog mom, the dog mom show, you'll notice that you'll Beasley know. and Oakley pretty much just lay on live their backs in, and sleep the entire episode. They live episode. in an like, external ta- state of chill, but yes. we, have, in, we have a lot um, to learn from our dogs. So. We do, but I think if I could be a little more like that, I'd be in a good, I'd be in a better position with my mind and my spirit. So I think that's Absolutely. a great lead into bringing Susie on the show. And I can't wait to hear more about Doga and how we can kind of meditate and connect with our dogs. Awesome. All right. Well, let's bring Susie on and chat with her. Well, hi, Susie. Welcome to the show. We're so happy hey. to have you here. I'm so glad to be here. Hey, hi, Amber. Susie. Hey, hey. So, so I hear that you are down in sunny Florida right now. Sunny Florida with my three dogs and three cats. Three dogs oh, and yay. I found Love another me. cat and dog person. I'm so happy. I, you know, I never <laughs> had cats until just a couple years ago, and I, I love cats. It's I know. so fun. They I go appreciate in and out it. The by themselves, which is neat. No litter Oh my box. gosh. I no. want to get like a catio for my cat. Sorry, oh, I know it's yeah, a dog no. podcast, but I, I was know. just so yeah. excited when someone who loves dogs also mm-hmm. loves cats well, because it's I, when like- I lived in New York, I was just we were just saying I was from New York. I got one of those things where the dog could pee on your patio. Oh yeah. You, so that I wouldn't have to walk down, you know, sure. six flights of stairs. I don't know. Uh, you. I'm in a hotel for one night and I'm like, ugh, never again. Yep. Yeah, but I uh, I don't want to live in an apartment ever again. Now I'm like, always need a backyard for sure. That's, that's really, I guess, the greatest thing about having a backyard. You can have more dogs, you know. Yeah, absolutely. Mm-hmm. Well, I know that you're technically the pet exercise expert and that you've created something really cool. Could you tell us about it and tell our listeners about it? Yeah, it's, um, you know, it started in New York when, um, after 9-11, when... I finally got my own dog, like, and became a dog mom that wasn't with a boyfriend's dog or my family dog. And so I finally became a dog mom, like, after nine. I was like, I'm not waiting any longer. And so I got this little black cocker spaniel. And I honestly tried to go to all the rescues, but it was like, I didn't have a car. I'm living in New York City. It's 9-11. And there was a yoga studio where I was training, and there was a pet store underneath. And there was this little black cocker spaniel in the window. And I just, like 
you know, I grew up with cockers. Mm. So I started, once I got them, it was kind of a strange time in New York, you know, and I just took them to class with me everywhere. You know, I was just, I'm not leaving my dog. And I just started stretching him and moving him. So long story short, you know, it became yoga for dogs. It was rough yoga. Now it's doga. It's worldwide. And, um, but it's gotten to a point where I just wrote a book after all these yes. years, not on the postures, but on the meaning of it and why we are with dogs, why we live with dogs and what they really do for us and what, why we do yoga with a dog or really mm-hmm. anything is, it's about like being like your dog, you know, how the dog can just be calm and happy <laughs> and live in the present. Yeah. <laughs> and 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 live in the present, you know. Yeah, those were so, like so spawn people offs, who maybe kind of. have never heard of this before. You know, I've heard of like doing yoga with goats, right? But you're you're doing yoga, and there's like goats around, but like so, right, right. So like so that's for where after that don't twenty know, years of yoga, I, I really got dogs? to the point where I trained a lot of different teachers. What would and it be like? So many different kinds of yoga that. You don't have to be doing wild postures. Like at the beginning, mm-hmm. people were like taking pictures and it was like a, a show. Like right. they wanted me to put it on my head or, you know, <laughs> bal- I, you know bal- I little I'd be balancing them on my head. You know, but that, that was silly. It got to the point where it was more like just meditating with your dog, you know, mm-hmm. just breathing and being calm with your dog and, <laughs> right. um, you know, bonding more in the sense of the connection of, mm-hmm learning to be like an animal who Hmm. all the beasts of this world could teach us a lot, you know? Oh, absolutely. I know we're like very big advocates on like taking little life lessons from our dogs for sure. Mm -hmm. Um, I was telling Chrissy just yesterday how when I take my dogs on a walk, my husband and I try to be like, look at how much they appreciate just like going on a walk and just being Mm -hmm. there. Now, I wanted to ask you before we get into I, I have so many questions and so many things to get into with you because yeah. I've taken a class with my dog in yoga and it was like oh, I my didn't favorite. Oh, I did really answer your question, but I'm oh, sorry. Oh, yeah. No, that's <laughs> fine. <laughs> but go ahead and answer your question and I'll go back. Uh, so I'll answer. ask you because they're called – I mean, the questions are all intertwined. It's all good. Yeah. Um, I wanted to ask you kind of like you mentioned your puppy that you got, but it, was there something specific that like were you teaching yoga classes before you got a dog and then you wanted to – yeah. Incorporate it, or was there something very specific that inspired you or kind you know, of You like- know, I look back to when I was a little kid. Um, I was, I remember I was like in third grade, I think, and I put on a dog show in my front yard for my dog's birthday. Like, and I had all these pictures, and I, I went around, I had everybody in the neighborhood dress their dog up and come to my house. And that oh my gosh. Be, and it, it was so. It was, you know, I was always, and I slept with my dog that I, a little poodle that was my great grandmother's when she went into a nursing home, we took her from St. Petersburg, Florida, brought her up to Jacksonville. We would drive her down and put her through the window into the nursing home. Her name was Sammy. But, um, so she lived to be like 18 and, and and then, and, you know, had other family dogs, but, um, oh my you know, I was always into that. Well, when I moved to New York to be an actress, I'm that's I was like on Broadway kind of things, that kind of thing. I do musicals, but I saw all these people walking like ten dogs. I'm like, what are they doing? And I, and I was like, so I said, you know what? I, I'm going to specialize in one dog. And, you know, and I didn't realize that they were getting paid like ten dollars a dog, and I'm gonna <laughs> like ten dollars. Right. You know, and to me that was kind of a lot back in 1995. But I ended up being a nanny for a boxer oh, sure. yeah, in yeah. a woman's house in New York City. I lived in her, she had worked for Ralph Lauren. Her sure. entire place was flowered Ralph Lauren stuff. And she moved to Boston during the week. And I would live with the boss, the boxer. And then on the weekends, um, mm-hmm. she'd come back. And I would go to my little place down the street with my friends. So I started this like dog care service. Wow. And that was even before... I mean, I was going to, to do, I was doing yoga, but it wasn't, um, I wasn't teaching it yet right. or anything, you know? So I really came to New York and I was like, I'm going to start a dog care service for large dogs. And, and I had other ones too. So then when 
Yeah. Then I then I met a guy and he had a, a Rottweiler and that was the first time yeah. I ever had a Rottweiler. I, I mean, actually asked him to marry me. I was like, oh, <laughs> I loved him so much. Marry me, be- yeah, marry yeah. me so I can yeah. have your dog, please. <laughs> yeah. So I re- and then. God, years later, I ran into him on the street, and I was like, "How's Vincent?" Because I love your dog. Potato leg, and he had three. Oh, that just made me so sad. But, um, but so yeah. So there were. It was all. I was always like a dog. Just a dog. It was my mentality. I think of always like being with a dog. You know, like yeah. Well, (laughs) you know, like. That's, I, I'm in the Actors Equity Union and, you know, I do musicals. And I love and, how you casually um, mentioned that. You're like, oh, when I was oh, on Broadway, good, yeah. no big deal. Um, like Broadway? Girl, right. that's so, a big you know, deal. Um, when yeah, yeah, yeah. my mom had said, become a yoga teacher to do something besides waitressing yes. in between shows. The lovely world of New York. <laughs> because I was really into yoga. Yeah. You know, my grandmother did yoga. So what, what trans- I was into taking a lot of classes. Right. But I'm like, mom, I'm not going to teach it. Oh, I, do I feel you. You know, I do yoga. And then mm-hmm. I've ended up my, my teacher, Dana Flynn from Laughing Lotus, who's gone on to open other Laughing Lotus and stuff. We're still closed. She's like, you should take, you should do my certification. And even if it's just for everything, you always says, oh, I'm furthering my practice, you know, mm-hmm. that's fine. So, but it was, you know, I'm a teacher. I'm a, I'm an entertainer. I love yeah. you. It, it all. And then when Doga happened it was, and then we started to be on TV, I was like, that's perfect, you know, because, you know, I like to be on TV and I, and, um, I love doing yoga and dogs. So it all just kind of, you know, melded together. But um, I, now I do have foster dogs, which is really cool. Um, I fostered my very first foster. I went in and I said, I'm here for your, this is in Jacksonville, downtown, your most needy dog. And there were so many dogs there. I'd never seen anything. Mm -hmm. It was like. (laughs) Yeah. I know. Yeah. And so yeah. Aloe. I see I see some of those shelters because TikTok yeah, it's is definitely now like a major a, thing in Florida. To there's, showcase, there's like a... dogs available. So aloe vera. It's hundreds of dogs. Oh, there's aloe. Oh, how cute. <laughs> oh, I'm terrible. So both of them were fostered, but so Aloe was. Oh, I love her name's oh, Aloe. Oh, 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 that's terrific. So Aloe had been stabbed and left on the side wow. of the road, and someone had written R.I.P. with Sharpie on his head. And that oh was gosh. the first time they had ever oh gosh, had crazy. anyone written on. I was like, what do you mean written? I didn't even get it at first. But they did that. And he couldn't walk at first, Allo. Um, it was horrible, you know, but I never took him back, mm. you know. And then um, and, the, and then Turbo came, like, a couple months later. He was two pounds. Oh, my God. Um, wow. found Not him. anymore. Was, everybody on the foster page wanted him. Oh. I was like, I want him. You know, he looked like a tiny Rottweiler. I was like, mm-hmm. oh, my purse bag. Oh, dog. I put yeah, him yeah, in yeah. there until he grew. So, <laughs> you got, you got at, your giant big, dog. That big oh, boy back there. He's a good boy. He's such what a, a good sweetie. boy. Yeah. And then Arden, she's um, 11. And... Um, She's, oh, a she's so cute. Oh my gosh. She's, she's, like, like, she's like, these are my babies. You guys dogs. have a lot of dogs? We oh, do. Yes. We have a myriad. I have four. Um, yes, I have three and two cats. So, you know, it's a household. Mm-hmm. And the one thing I like about, <laughs> excuse me, the one thing I'm choking on my own uh, excitement to chat. Um, <laughs> the one thing I noticed though is that like uh, some of the moves that you may involve in yoga are actually some great rehabilitation moves mm. that we use on dogs or we use that to prep them before we take them mm-hmm. out for some of our bigger sports. Right. And I think like if anything, more people could make that connection because it's not always so much that you are providing the dog with this calm effect and you're providing this dog with like this foundation of being able to know where their body is, their back legs, their front legs, their back mm-hmm. and be aware of that. But also there's a flip side in that energy. You know, our calm energy can also affect them. So it teaches oh, yeah. us a way to be to help affect them because I think they even say for dogs, like if we yawn, it can be contagious to a dog. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard that. So like, so they definitely feed off of our energy as well. Yeah. Some people might be at home. Like, uh, my dog is a nervous Nelly. There's no way that dog is going to chill out for Doga. But the mm. truth of the matter is, is maybe if it's you can the person calm yourself. The nervous Nelly. Yeah. Right. And if you can find yourself to be in a People say that all the time. So then I was saying, so some people will go to a Doga class where, Everybody brings their dog and there's a mat and all that. But I've, what I was trying to say is yoga should become just part of your life where mm. you do it 
every day, all throughout your day. And it can be five minutes here, five yeah. minutes there, like when you wake up. You so know, what, Susie, down. what does doga look like then? Like if someone were to, to say if someone has never heard of this before and they're like, okay, well, I maybe do stretches. Maybe I mm-hmm. do some stuff with my dog. Like is doga, does someone need to know how to do yoga to right, start off? Like, question. What does that look like? Right. That's a good question. So it would be more like just start by sitting and doing mm-hmm. like or laying. So start with two poses. The first pose, like you know, like a a full lotus pose, you know, you could, you know, sit in a full lotus and have them sit and you'll do a meditation and they'll just sit or just rub Mm -hmm. them or just touch their third eye or massage and just get where you're just both. Cause yoga doesn't have to be, obviously there's eight branches to yoga, eight limbs, um, that yoga postures is only one of it, you know, and then there's the breathing and then there's the karma yoga being a good person. And, and, you know, and being um, healthy and all, and meditating and all that. And so um doesn't have to be fancy. So people can start easy, you know, or lay yeah. in Shavasana and lay on your back. And mm-hmm. then you start to gradually add in more poses if, for a person who doesn't know a lot. But if you're a, a yoga practitioner and you, um, you have a vinyasa flow, oh, you know, yeah, let yeah. the dog just be there with you I, mm-hmm. yeah, and, I and start vinyasa. to – you know, just start to touch them and let them join. I know, you know, at the beginning there weren't really set poses and I really don't mm. think it has to be like that. Yeah. Cause That's that might what limit what people down. can now do. The paw of attraction is more like the dog could have a horrible, something really horrible happen. But then in the next second, they're, they're not letting what's happening right in front of them affect them right. anymore. Like right. they can let go of it so quickly. And, um, you know, there's just so much to learn from from just being calm with your dog and, yeah. and what you were saying, the energy. It's, well, it that, is. that gives me like another question, I guess. You mentioned like, you know, dogs, dogs do sometimes experience like a lot of stress and a lot of trauma. Right. Um, and do you have like examples or stories of where practicing some doga with your dog has helped the person or the dog kind of get into yeah. that state of mind that helps them overcome these things? Oh, yeah. I mean, Alec would, uh, I mean, obviously with my dog, Alec, I mean, he didn't know me when I took him Mm -hmm. home and I started to try and do things with him. He wouldn't roll over on his back. You know, it took him a little bit to be trusting. And um, lots of, lots of people have, you know, used, have used yoga. I mean, it's, I'm not the only one who has a foster. I have a lot of people Mm -hmm. who have them and it's, when you, when you are giving them that love and energy, then they give it back and they, right. you know, they're able to move on quickly, you know, and they do. I don't, that's what I wonder. Do they think about it? They do when they dream, are they twitching? Are they mm-hmm. thinking about it or, right, right. or are they just chasing a squirrel? Right. Sometimes, um, sometimes I see my dog running in his sleep. Sometimes he's wagging his tail in his sleep. I sometimes know. he's growling. And I'm always like, what are you thinking about? But right. you, know, you, you mentioned your dog, Aloe not wanting to lay on his back. And that just like made me think of, you know, some, I, I have, I only have one animal in my house. that's not a rescue animal. And so I have noticed that the ones that I didn't get to socialize early on do have, you know, but different watch, experiences. You do a test and just mm-hmm. maybe just the two of you in a room by yourself and just like be on the ground and do things like even turbo. He gets a little bit like he'll try to run around and stuff. But he, he if I stay here, yeah, oh, they'll want me to do it, and just oh, they'll come yeah. up and lay next to you, you know? like please and, stretch and you, me out. All of a sudden, they'll like give up. Yeah, yeah. Um, they yeah, kinda I let, took. They kind of learn to let go, you know. Yeah, Absolutely. like like we do. What what I know it is. I have to say that it's like that is probably the worst thing that people have is their mind that they continue yeah. to think about things. Hi, I'm yeah. the problem. It's right, me, right. <laughs> you know, and that is the rumination of the mind is yes. uh, is a, the, the killer of the world. You know, yep. and, you know, and so um, the dog is in alignment, you know, they can easily get back into alignment because nobody's going to lose contrast in the, this world We're, you know, mm-hmm. we're all going to move from something that happens and then you have to, you know, they use it to, to, to learn from it, yeah. you know, and they don't regret and sit there and, and, and r- rather than moving on quickly. I know if yeah, only absolutely. we could all do that. Right. And so I heard you, you know, with that being said, I heard you mention just in conversation here, but I think we should go deeper the paw of attraction, which I thought was such a fun play on to, well, the law of attraction, as we've all 
kind of heard. Can you tell <laughs> can you tell me more about that and what that means? Say that to you? again. You were frozen for a second. I'm sorry. You're the paw of attraction. Oh, the paw of attraction. I would love to well, learn more. Like, what does yeah. that mean to you? Because I mm-hmm. immediately think of the law of attraction. Does it have? Is it? Is it very similar? Or do you guys study the law of attraction, or is it just something you've heard of? I've heard of it. Yeah, I've, 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 it, but I've that's looked not as into far as it. it. <laughs> yeah. So when I so I started studying specifically the law of attraction um, with Abraham um, Esther Hicks in like 2018 or 2017, and and then I also started. Um, doing a, a master's program in spirituality at the University of Florida with Michael Singer, who wrote um, a few books, um, The Untethered Soul and stuff mm-hmm. like that. And um, all of a sudden, all of it, it clicked that everything they were talking about, is that shaking me? Um, everything that they were talking about was a dog. Exactly. Mm-hmm. They're trying to say the mm-hmm. spirit, talking sure, about the sure. spiritual being, you know, you know, and how to live a, a spiritual life. And so to me, that's um, what, how I study the law of attraction is um, utilizing your power of vibration and yes. energy. Yeah. Either in a good way or a bad way yeah. to attract something, you know. And um, when I, when, I started studying with them. Like Michael's big thing is how you can't let the moment in front of you determine how you're going to feel, you know, no, like, that's true. Um, that's so true. Or like what's so, in your present really, moment. Yeah. yeah. Dogs really don't do that. I mean, um, dogs will get away, you know, like if, right. if, even if you're just in the house ranting and raving yourself or something, <laughs> they'll go hide, you know, mm-hmm. they'll go make themselves comfortable somewhere else. You know, mm-hmm. they're not going to, um, you know, well, what, what also, also another thing is that like, we tend to live in our life right now and say, well, I needed, I need more of this, or I need, I want more of this, or I yes. want to be here. And I wish yeah. I wasn't here right now. I wish I was somewhere else. Even dogs right. in like deplorable conditions are just like, they learn to just cope and do the best. Yeah. With yeah. What make, make the it. most of the situation. Right. And, for and, that's, and that's, that's not to say that that's okay to do to right. dogs. It's not. But, you know, I spend a lot of time sometimes getting caught up in that. I wish I moved somewhere else. I had a bigger mm. house or a bigger yard. Right. Or I wish I didn't always have to do this. And I'm like, you know, by doing all that, you lose right. so much yeah, time. Yeah, you're, you're missing here. out on what's yeah. happening right so now. So the dog has right. more of that happy journey to the yeah. happy ending. You're not going to mm-hmm. have an unhappy journey to all of a sudden a happy ending, you know. Right. So, you know, it's like start right now, start right now. Like the power of now, you know, and Eckhart Tolle, he's a huge influencer of me too. And Eckhart Tolle, um, you know, I have all these different spiritual teachers that I was studying through yoga. And then all of a sudden, you know, the animal part came out. But he wrote a book called um, um, uh, The Guardian of of beings, guardians mm. of being, and it's about dogs and cats. And he writes oh, little poems, you oh, know, wow. about how watch a cat sitting there doing <laughs> nothing all day, and they got so much done or whatever. Yeah, you know? like, <laughs> they're so proud of um, themselves, even though yeah, they did nothing today. <laughs> um, so, uh, you know, so what happened was the paw of attraction. It came to me when you read it, you'll understand that it's not about just the poses and the asanas. It's not just about meditation. It's about living like a dog. You know, yeah. it's like, can you live? Wow. Like, so it's a good if, reminder. Yeah. Like that's, all these that's people, my goal. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like no, all right. the spiritual goal. teachers are saying, you know, how can you be the highest spiritual being? And I love that um, Eckhart wrote the, do- the book on dogs because he always says that, that my cat is more spiritual. My dog is more spiritual. Oh, yeah, look than at the me, artwork. You know? So wow. it's, you know, so the, that's the great thing about to me, Paw of Attraction has taken it to a point where you, you don't have, you can be new to yoga, you can be new to yoga. And as you want to add fancier poses, you can. And if you want to find a class that has a full on workout for you and your dog, or it can be just a lifestyle mm-hmm. um, of being And just including person. them and just, you know, keeping them, just including them along. Because a lot of times, like if, the, if your dog is senior or has, you know, other issues where they won't be able to like do the poses, yeah. but just having them with you. Cause at the mm-hmm. end of the day, our dogs just want yeah. to be Senior with us and spend time with us. Just getting out of the house. Like they yes. pop up. I they learned that, you know, my dog, my one boy is getting a little older. He's not like mm-hmm. quite senior, senior, but he's getting older. Mm-hmm. And I learned that like, 
you know, by pulling things out of his life, you think you're doing, you're like shortening his quality of life, but that's not true. He just embraces yep. doing things a little bit slower and he really enjoys that. Like that to him mm-hmm. is replacing the days we used yeah, to do the, fast and agility cool and all is, the other things. Oh, and the other thing is, you know, people have, you know, like body dysmorphia, you know, and mm-hmm. dogs don't, I know. you know? Like a dog could, like Vincent lost his arm and, they just you know, and keep on and, keeping and, on. Yeah, this is, and they're this just is my life now. We're going to do it. You know, um, yeah. they're not their body. Like they know that just because their hand's gone now, that yeah. that didn't change anything. You can yeah. take it all the way still. They have to adapt just like we do. Yeah. yeah. And so that really just shows that there's this spiritual inner being mm-hmm. inside of of, um, of living creatures, you know? Yeah. And so that's like the main thing, you know, that here we are on this earth in the middle of billions of galaxies. And we're the only one that has any kind of life on it. Yeah, right. And, um, and we're living with dogs, you know, and, and there's, so there has to be some connection of the inside just cause they can't actually speak but you we know that they're right almost oh there's than definitely are, oh you know? there's so much more to it there's so much more there's, to yeah it. there's so much so the paw of attraction really just takes it to the point of like when you close your eyes you're two beings of just your inner you know connecting yeah. it doesn't even matter if it's a person that's why i asked my dog to marry me you know i liked mm. him better than, <laughs> than yeah, anybody yeah. else you know he was nicer to me than the other guys <laughs> Yeah, that's wow. so. So, if so, if more people want to learn about Doga, where where could they find you? Where can they get involved? Tell us more so mm-hmm. we can lead our audience. Well, my website, I've always had dogadog.org forever. Um, there's instructors though all over the world. You know, I've got ladies that are in all of really like Paris and um, Australia, New Zealand. So there's if you really just you know kind of want to search for it, you'll find it. If anybody yeah. goes online, you know, but. Um, you know, my book is on sale on my website or on Amazon. Um, and it's, it's a book you want to read a little bit here and a little bit there and just, Mm -hmm. and, and we just can't forget, you know, Mm -hmm. that, um, our example of like a Buddha is sitting in our room with us, you know, Mm, like, that's so true. And and it's, we're so lucky, you know, to have them. And Mm -hmm. it's such a blessing, you know, for them to be part of our lives. And so that, you know, for me, Doga, you take it to where you want it to be. Like if you're right. new. That's the beauty of yoga in general. Yeah, is that exactly. There's no, pressure, there's no pressure that you have to be the next like yogi. You know, like there's yeah. no pressure and you can do it at your pace and everyone's and always welcoming. So, like you could go to my website, Doga Dog, and um, I have uh, other videos on how to do instructionals and stuff like that. Um you know, and so the paw of attraction is more about how you're um, becoming like a dog attracting it's more of the essence and the mm-hmm. um, spiritual inside that you should find within everything that we do. Like when we say take yoga into your life off the mat, you know, you know, we try to like, you know, take dog life off of the mat into our right. regular life, mm-hmm. you know. That's so uh, true. I think that's why yeah. I always wanted my dog with me at the beginning during 9-11 when mm-hmm. you just, you know, felt well, at that point, good. everyone wanted their family. Like, just yeah. every, like nothing. Was, like in that moment, all those yeah. other problems suddenly were very, very small or didn't matter right. because everything was so upside down. Yeah. yeah, and so we and we need to think like that. Like each day is as special as getting a dog because of some kind of huge mm. contrast like that. Like yeah, we shouldn't so let true. our lives get to that point. Yeah, yeah. Where it has Stay to rooted. Be. You know, stay grounded, um, so, just like they teach you. Absolutely. You know? I just yeah. love that. You know, it's it's more of it's more than just doing yoga with your dog. It's about the way of being. It's about the way that you live your life. It's about your relationships. It's like your mental process. And, um, you know, there's just so much that we can learn from our dogs. And I think that this is just a really great way for us to like take a step back, look at how they live their lives and really, really try to achieve that in ourselves of just like appreciating the moment. And I think that's really cool that you've used something as great as yoga for your body to also connect with your dog and also and- offer enrichment. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it also offers enrichment for your dog as well. So in the end, yeah, it's like, it's, it um, you know, it's a lifetime together thing. and it changes when you have a new dog too. You know, you, it is a, when I, when Coley died, you know, and he was my first Yogi, it was kind of like, how will back then it was, um, I didn't have another dog. I didn't realize that it wasn't about the postures. It was about 
breathing together and learning how to live mm-hmm. life happy together and, you know, like a puppy and we, how they wake up every day excited, you know, oh. like we can all wake up like every day, like, <laughs> right. I know. Like, you know, <laughs> they, they wake up sometimes so thinking, true. I wake up and I'm like, where's my coffee? <laughs> right, right. And they, you know, I love that. About, That's what makes me so happy. We like, think about yesterday, my- you know, and dogs can move on quickly from yesterday, which, you know, Very well, resilient. they don't have, and then you say, well, they don't have to make money and they don't have to do that. But, you know, beasts of this world have to do something out there to yep. survive. So that's really inspiring. And honestly, like I, I need to practice this every day. And I really think that and even for me though, like it it is a daily, like learning. Yeah. I'll lose it in a second. I'll be like, oh my God, I just have to go get wrapped up. Yeah. Yeah, You get like a beep on your phone and all of a sudden you have all these anxious things. Amber Amber and I could definitely (laughs) use some dog in our lives because half the time we're like texting each other. Like, oh my God, we're so anxious. We're so overwhelmed. Of how you're feeling. Yeah. Well, you know, that too. But that's what I was saying about the dysmorphia of, you Mm. know, people change as you get older, you know, your body's going to change and the dog's body's change like an older dog, like Arden can barely walk. And, but when I'm stretching her, you know, and being with her, she's so happy and we have to stop um, looking at ourselves so much and like dogs look in the mirror and stuff. A dog's not sitting there thinking about all the things wrong with them. <laughs> right, right. Or what they're themselves. lacking. They're focusing on what they can do and, and what they can do. Um, so it, they live, positive. right, just from the beginning of what you said, it's all about living in the present moment. It's about your energy. So the law of attraction is you attract what you're giving out. Mm. So whether it's good or bad. Oh, I believe you that. You know, whether it's good or bad. Absolutely. But the law of attraction is the secret behind dogs and dogo, mm. and they usually have, they understand how. Wow. To control, you know, the energy and the way that they I love that. It. I guess I love that so much. And I wish that we had more time, but we do have to wrap oh, this yeah. up. But I know. I know you mentioned your website, but is there anything else that you can kind of leave our listeners with so that they can learn more about this and try to practice right. this with their yeah. dogs? Yeah. Yeah. You know, just you don't even need a yoga mat, but it's nice to have the same thing every day. Like mm-hmm. as you put it out, the dog will know. And and if you know yoga already do some of your poses and let them join in and you guys probably have taught them some massage moves or some you know other things use massage and yeah Mm -hmm. and just mostly start to breathe together you know it all comes back to we we forget that we forget to breathe you know um just sitting and breathing that's so many people say go back to go to meditation and mm. really I'm not going to talk too much more no way to go but yoga is to prepare you for meditation mm. in the olden days that's why they did all those asanas oh. so then they could sit because oh, their bodies were comfortable so you know we're learning how to to sit comfortably you know yeah it's a beautiful way to look at it yeah. Thank well, you so much, great. Susie. We're Thanks so glad I've had you. It's great information. I can't wait to learn more. And if I come down to Florida, I'm going to have to hit you up and we can do yeah, some. You know, so yoga. Doga Dog and yeah. anything Doga Online, you guys, will, is there's great people out there in a lot of cities. Awesome. So thank you so much for coming You're on and welcome. sharing your passion with us. We hope some audience members are going to go home and try to do some Doga with their own dog or just learn to sit quietly and be in the moment mm-hmm. with their animal. We can all yeah, benefit just from that. Starting with the Paw of Attraction, reading it, it will make you. St- understand more that you don't have to be doing anything more than being happy. That's in right. The so Just definitely being. check Amazon. <laughs> so go to Amazon, check out Paul's yeah. Attraction. Be sure to grab that copy for your summer read, your fall read. And thank you again, Susie. We can't thank, thank you enough you. for coming on the show Bye, today. And we hope to see you again soon. Okay, Thanks I'll so see much, you Susie. Bye. Bye. Bye everybody out there. I'm going to try my best to get into that mindset of the paw of attraction and kind of living every day like a dog. It's so true. And, you know, I think that, like, I feel a bit calm. It just reminds me. Like, it's not that I feel calmer in this very moment. But, man, it's going to remind me when I get so lost and obsessed with life around me Mm. to, like, take a chill pill, like, literally. And to take, like, you know, a moment to look over at my dog and – and let my energy feed what how that dog feels because I'm probably affecting them too. Yeah, so such, that's so such true. good information that I feel that like it's gonna get me in a better headspace moving yeah, forward. Yeah, and so even I'm just taking a few breaths. Yeah, it's a few breaths with your dog might actually be more beneficial than we realize. But I know I really so enjoyed chatting with her. It was really awesome.
Yes, a huge thank you to Susie for taking your time for chatting with us and really educating all of us. Hopefully this will be something other people can enjoy too. Okay, well, I know we have some questions from our amazing listeners. So let's take one of our questions and see what they have to say. My dog has a tendency to bark excessively, whether it's at the doorbell, other dogs passing by, or random noises. I want to find a way to address this behavior without suppressing their natural instincts. Can you provide guidance on how to curb excessive barking while still allowing my dog to communicate? That is a difficult question um, because I know Chrissy and I always talk about like the reason why your dog is barking. I have met some dogs. I don't know about you, Chrissy, but I have met some dogs that just bark because they enjoy barking. Mm -hmm. They're not barking at anything or for anything. They just enjoy hearing It's like the least path of resistance. It's the easiest thing for them to do. So they do it. Um, yeah. Whether it's excited or someone startles them or they're frustrated or they want something, you know, they just, that's what they'll resort to first and foremost. Yeah. I think it's all about redirecting what they should do in those moments. And and, and also for this particular person, I, I think it's just about figuring out all the time, okay, but what, right. what does that actually deeper. mean? <laughs> I want to dig a little deeper. Is that all the time in your house at the window, all the time in all different areas of their life? If that's the case, I definitely suggest you get in with a positive reinforcement trainer mm-hmm. and start to delve deeper into why these are uh, occurrences are happening. And yeah. Anytime we earplugs. see, anytime <laughs> earplugs are a good idea. Earplugs are Any, great. Anytime that we see a dog is doing something we don't like that they're doing, we have to realize the dog is doing it for a reason. Um, and whether that's because they enjoy barking or they're barking at something, there's a lot of different management techniques that you can use to also prevent them from barking. So if they're barking out the window, you can try covering the windows. You could put something on the windows, redirecting them, like Chrissy said, to great things. So if my dogs, like if I have construction workers outside. I'm going to bring them downstairs and give them Kong toys or bones to chew on so they're not looking at, you know, the stuff going on and barking. But that's a a loaded question that I hope that you can find the reason why, JC, if that's how we say your name, and hopefully that will help your dog out a little bit. Hey, dog moms, this is Alex from Austin. My adorable Maltese turns into a total escape artist whenever I try to pick them up for grooming. Any tips or tricks to make this process less of a chase and more of a pampering session? Thanks. I do understand what he's asking. So he's got a small dog. And this is actually a really common thing I've seen in small dogs where they know like you call them over, you lean down to pick them up and then they run away. Mm -hmm. Um, And the thing is that if you are tricking your dog, they will figure it out and they will start to distrust you. And then the behavior is going to get a lot worse. So you're going to have to stop tricking your dog. Unfortunately for you, I know that's that's what you wanted. How do I trick my dog? How do I make it you don't. quicker, faster? Yeah. That's you don't. You don't. Not ideal. And that's, that's not the answer you probably wanted, but I'm sure Chrissy will agree. You're going to have to separate this into pieces and train your dog to feel comfortable with you grabbing them and having them come close to you. And there's a lot of different training you can do out there that's like consent training where the dog comes to you, you put your hand on them, reward them, take your hand away so that the dog is not thinking every time you bend down to grab them, it's, it's going to be a rush don't like to do. Yeah. And a lot of small dogs don't like things rushing at them, especially because they're smaller. And so like, and also right. being grabbed, a lot of small dogs don't like that feeling of being held and held down or, you know, to the point where like they are smaller than you and you are more powerful than them. Does it make it yeah. right to kind of like be able to pin a dog down to do what you need to do? So yeah, I think it's all about just finding a way that's going to be comfortable with both them. Or if it's really out of your element, consult somebody who is like, going to be the one that's going to be able to do this in the best way, shape or form. So maybe finding a groomer who's able to help you through that. Yeah. Um, There is a trainer that's called Laura Monaco Torelli. I think her name is. She does a lot of that type of training, like has videos online, but something also like if you are in the middle of trying to train your dog to get used to being picked up and handled, maybe, you know, For every time you have to pick them up and wipe their eyes, pick them up 10 times and give them like their favorite thing and a treat or something so that it's not always this like negative association of being grabbed. Right. And you could use a special occasion type of treat that your dog only gets when you're going to grab them. And that will hopefully help you manage it while you're working on this behavior separately from when you need it. You know, when I dremel my puppy's nails is that, you know, a lot of times you think you got to hold the dog down to do that. But what I actually did is I put a licket mat, you know, on the... Mm -hmm. on the door, like of my kitchen. 
and it sticks to that surface. So I end up over there, but it's great because like he can just stand on all fours and I just gently take the Dremel and start touching it. I don't even have to like hold his body or anything. He's like, oh, okay, what's going on there? Yeah. And after a while, he's like, okay, that's it. I don't like it. It's too much. But that's just, okay, we take a little break. We go back to it. I maybe do like one to two feet and then, you know, it takes two or three days to get it all done. But I've got a dog I don't have to physically strap down. And he's like, okay, I understand. This is not a... Uh, I'm going to be forced into a corner every time that thing comes out. Because as soon as you get right. that ear cleaner or you get that Dremel out, they know. Yeah. And so if you've paired it to moments that cause them a lot of stress, it's going to be really hard to undo that. Right. And the more you trick them, the more they're not going to trust you and they're yeah. it's going to get worse. So just they keep that in into mind. other things. Yeah. Absolutely. Great question. All right. We do have time for one more question. Okay. So we have one more question. This question is from Rebecca. And she says, my dog has horrible separation anxiety and tries to destroy my house every time I leave her alone. I've tried everything, enrichment toys, crate training, drugs, etc. Now my trainer has suggested an e-collar to help redirect her anxiety. What do you think of this and do you have any suggestions? Mm. So before we give our suggestions, I just want to say my heart feels for you, Rebecca. This is like a really difficult thing to go through. My in-laws are going through this right now with their dog. And it's not easy. They can't even leave the house. And I I know how hard and emotional that can be. So I imagine you're feeling pretty desperate and willing to just try anything to make your dog feel better. I agree. Um, I, Beasley had horrendous anxiety, crate anxiety, separation anxiety. Um, and so I understand where you're coming from. We actually did like 99% of what you've done, um, except for that last step there. I'm not sure how I feel about that one. Yeah, I would say flat out it's a bad idea, Rebecca. Yeah. Um, and if your trainer we're, we're is referring to the e collar, right? Yeah. Right. Using an e collar um, is something that could add potential, you know, more stress and more triggers to your dog, especially for something like separation anxiety. This is something that is not a training issue; it is a, an anxiety related mental issue for your dog. And so, you want to make sure that you're reaching out to someone who is qualified and has experience with this level of anxiety because this is not a crate training thing. This is not something an enrichment toy is going to fix. Um, so my biggest suggestion for you would be to look for a certified, a clinical, bo- sorry, a board. How do you say that? Board certified? Mm-hmm. Board certified clinical. Is it? I'll just say board certified. Sorry. Board certified um, Better Veterinary behaviorist. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, it's a long sentence, my brain. (laughs) That's okay. You're good. I would just probably start from Um, the top of that sentence. That was good though. So I would suggest that you find someone qualified with experience in this issue. Um, You want to find a board certified veterinary behaviorist. And this is not your typical veterinarian. This is not your general health veterinarian. You're going to go and just see your dog to get help when they, you know, have a checkup. This is a veterinarian who has gone through education and has the experience to be able to handle this level of anxiety and they will be able to help you through the steps of helping your dog recover. And Um, and also understanding the why, as we always say on here, um, and I, and I don't know your situation. I, all I can do is offer some ideas to think about outside the box. But, you know, I, I remember when I worked at a veterinary hospital, there was a dog who was being this destructive, but, you know, come down the line, they actually found out it was because when they left, there was like construction happening during the day, but that wasn't happening when they came home. So they had no idea. It was just right. like construction that would only happen while they were at their nine to five job. And if it was ramping up the dog's anxiety in other ways than you just being gone. But I will also add, my dog Beasley had horrible anxiety. Like he would make himself bleed in a wire crate because he would mm-hmm. dig at it, dig at it. He would rip the carpet out underneath. It was awful. But they do make some crates these days that are really made to be safer for your dog. And so if they are going to explode and have sort of like all these outbursts, they make crates that are still very comfortable for the dog, but are also a lot safer and more secure so that your dog can't get their nails in the wires or get their teeth around something um, and yet can still be a safe haven. So I would definitely expand the horizon of um, what you've been choosing to try to use on your dog. And maybe there's Mm -hmm. something out there that's newer and is going to be a little bit of a better direction. Yeah, definitely. And just don't forget that there is a difference between your general vet and a dog trainer and a veterinarian that specifically studies 
and specializes Psychology. in behavior cases because yeah. those veterinarians that are certified in that are are unmatched. They they have they have expertise in this and they have experience with dogs like this, which that's what you really need. Um, so find see if you can find someone local to you or an online consult that would be able to help you through that. But yeah. good luck with that, Rebecca. I know that that's really difficult and really hard to go through. And I really hope that you can find some solutions that will help you kind of get some peace and your dog will get some peace too. So we want to thank you guys, our listeners for tuning in and sending us your questions. We absolutely love hearing from you all and learning more about your dogs. And don't forget that you can send us more questions and little blurbs to dogtv.com slash the dog moms. If you guys want to see some behind the scenes or learn more about our guests, you can head to our landing page. The same thing. Send us questions there. See all the things we talked about in today's episode on that page, dogtv.com slash the dog moms. Yes, you might even see some pictures of Oakley stranded on the water. But oh if you liked this episode or if you want to watch more, please leave us a review and subscribe to our podcast. Again, we are available on iHeartRadio and Spotify and other streaming platforms. And don't forget, you can also follow us on our social media accounts and stay in tune with us and say hi. We'd love to chat with you. So until next time, stay positive and have a wonderful day with your furry friends. Go out there and enjoy some time with your dog. They just want to spend time with you. See you next time. Bye. Bye. Whiskey. <laughs> oh, she's mad you're not playing with her. Dog box, dog box. What you gonna do? What you gonna do when they come for you? Dog box.